This month I'm showing two bodies of work, um, a group of paintings that I'm standing in front of right now from 1996 that I'd never had shown before. All the paintings are octagonal. Um, some like this one here is sort of a squashed octagon and this one is actually an equilateral octagon. And I call them cubic knots because they're, um, uh, in each of the paintings there are illusions of cubes that pull off of the, the eight sides of the canvases. And uh, in some of them, the, the uh, say, if you see the front face of a cube here, and that's the top of the cube, and that's the side, and you can continue around that, and there's a series of eight, or possibly even 16 cubes that are, that are uh, inter, inter splice on the, on the canvas. Um, the paintings were done shortly after my having seen Mondrian's show at the Museum of Modern Art. So we have the sort of classic Mondrian uh, red, yellow, blue, and white in most of the paintings. And uh, another artist that I was thinking about at the time was um, uh, Frank Stella and his uh, shape canvases and how the the designs of his, of his, his canvases uh, were uh, uh, created in, in reference to the, the perimeters, or vice versa, or the, the interior designs determine the shape. So these are uh, unusual for me uh, in the, the fact that they're shape, shape canvases, and uh, they're my first, uh, they uh, represent my return to oil paint after 20 years of working in acrylics. This last year, I was, I was thinking of them again and realized that, that I was doing some things in them, had been doing some things in these paintings, which are related to the illusions of my, my recent work, which I'd call translucent fields. In, in this one, the, uh, it's after the first couple where the lines were, interior lines were parallel to the sides, I decided to create a more skewed uh, structure. And I'm trying to like, find the easiest one to, to demonstrate on this. Say if we saw, uh, looking for a cube in here, one face of the cube would be this, the other face would be here, the top, and this would be the side. And uh, so uh, again, like I, I said it with the other paintings, there's a reference to the side, but, but the design here is more pulling away from the, uh, the perimeter rather than, than echoing it, uh, just to make it more uh, eccentric and skewed. And uh, uh, Oh, maybe I should say about the color, that it's essentially laid out in this painting uh, as one, um, it's uh, like the uh, four color uh, map theorem, where you need to have four colors um, in mapping, say, uh, any, any land mass, like Europe or Asia or whatever, you need, you need uh, four colors so that no two areas end up with the same color touching side to side. So it's, it's really was done pretty simply and pretty quickly, but that was really what I had in mind in terms of where the colors were, was to keep the, they say, uh, t any two reds or y yellows or blues separated um, so that they were not touching side to side. Okay. Uh, it's made up of grays. And uh, what's going on in this, though this, uh, is, though this it's really hard to tell in, in some of these paintings, um, is that there are two um, spirals that are underlying the structure. And on each of the spirals there are linked stars. And uh, so I, uh, one of the spirals begins over on this side and extends out, and the other spiral uh, starts from that point and, and then continues over this way. And as the stars move out from their origin point of the spiral, uh, they become more, become larger and, and more distorted. And uh, so I initially lay down uh, these two colored fields of red stars in this case and blue stars and then I uh, uh, paint, I painted the whole thing as I go along. So I, I probably started in the upper left hand corner with this painting and uh, determine as I'm going um, whether or not the field, uh, I'm looking at a shape is the color of the field, which in this case is white, 
or is it a, a single layer of a star, or is, is the shape an overlapping of the stars? So the stars in both fields are light gray, and where they overlap, it becomes dark gray. So it's a simple illusion of um, increasing opacity as the uh, as the, the stars overlap. And say, for instance, here you could see one star and another one here, and where they've overlapped is, and again, it's hard for me to see this myself, that's the overlapping with another star here that uh, goes like this. But these smaller stars, because they're closer to the center of this spiral, um, they're easier to read. And with this painting, this painting is made up of um, three layers of spiraling stars. And the center points of the spirals are in some kind of um, triangular relationship. It's hard for me to point to exactly where the origin points of the stars are. But they're, or they spiral out in, uh, and become, the stars become increasingly larger uh, as the arcs extend out. And uh, this, in this case here, the background is, is this blackish color. And so and it were, there's, then as I'm painting, if I determine there's only one layer of stars at a point, that's the dark gray. Where two stars overlap, it's this middle gray. And when all three stars overlap, it's a light gray. And, uh, sorry? Well, I, I guess I wanted to go over to that, even though that's not where we, where we wanted to end. Um, uh, I could, maybe I could say this is another three-step spiral painting. One of the spirals originates up here, where you can see the small stars. Another one down here, and another over here. In this case, the background is red. The field color is this intense red. And so you can see here where the, um, the small stars are against the, um, the red. They're, they're, they're turquoise. Here against the red, they're this orange. And down here, they're kind of magenta. <coughs> and the, um, the overlappings are uh, the mixtures of those colors then, uh, plus white. And where they all three overlap, the magenta, the orange, and the turquoise, they make this gray, which is uh, a tint of, of the gray. This painting also uh, has three spirals, one of yellow stars, one of red stars, and one of blue stars. And where they overlap, the primary colors overlap, they make the secondary colors. So yellow and red make the orange, etc. And then where the three of them overlap, all three of the primaries, it makes the brown. And in this painting, the colors are set against a black field. Um, and then the other painting that's related to that is a smaller canvas. It's about 30 by 30 inches. And uh, it's the same relationship of the three primary spirals, uh, starred spirals, overlapping to make the complements or, or the uh, secondary colors. And here, the, the back, the field color is white. Then this is the largest painting in the show, it's six by nine feet. And it's, um, the title is, sorry, right. Four Coiled Field One. And in this painting, there are four spirals. Um, each originate from this close to uh, one of the, the middle sides, like the, uh, the square gray painting, the, uh, the field color, the background is the black, and where a single layer of star appears against the black, it's the dark gray. And then, when, and then as they overlap, the, um, the overlapping has been having increasingly light until we get the shapes of, of very light gray, almost white, that's, and those are areas where four stars overlap. And so there's an illusion of transparency or uh, translucency that results from that.